Okay, here's the last of the rare vintage Colt revolvers that I got to see recently. And it turns out to be more rare and collectible than I thought when I first uh, examined it. I was concentrating on some of the other ones in the collection. Uh, there are um, estimated 250 to 500 of these left in the world. And here's one of them, the Colt Bankers Special. Made from 1928 to 1943. And this was a popular gun, it seems. The only reason production stopped was because 1943, of course, means World War II. And the demands of supplying sidearms to the U.S. military took precedence over a civilian weapon like this. I saw one source say that these are one of the most sought-after pre-war double-action revolvers there is. But what is it precisely? Well, it's obviously a snub-nosed revolver made by Colt. Two-inch barrel, six shots... By the way, I don't always get such clear images on the up-close of the name in the barrel, so I was real happy with that. And back to specs, the one I'm holding is a 38, but it was actually also made in 22 long rifle and a 32. So it was made in three different calibers, and one of them was not 38 special, by the way. It's just a 38. You know, and what is it in terms of its inception? It's a conception. It was basically a rebranded Colt Detective Special, right? The two-inch snub nose revolver. But they did change things up, as we saw with the uh, different calibers. And the idea here is that it's for bankers to fight off bank robbers with. This happily moves us into my specialty as a weapons researcher and author. Real quick, side note here. You know, why are we looking at two leather saps? Because before guns small leather weighted bludgeons like this were sometimes marketed to people like bank tellers. So you'd have an old-time advertisement uh, paper, obviously, uh, you know, marketing something as a cashier's kosh, kosh being one word for, you know, a uh, weighted, small weighted club, a cashier's kosh or a teller's kosh. So the idea was, hey, here's something you can defend yourself with in case somebody tries to rob you at the store. Uh, funny enough, the only reason I'm using this picture here is because these two happened to be on my desk when I was making this video. So anyway, uh, Colt was obviously, I think, unaware of that weapon naming tradition, but that's what they tapped into when they called their revolver a banker's special. Obviously, that's Jesse James. We saw that name above. I'm going to show some famous uh, American bank robbers here, but bank robbing had been a big deal for a long time in America. Here's Bonnie and Clyde mugging for the camera. They robbed about 15 banks, I think. So anyway, you know, these people often became celebrities, uh, slick of a certain kind. Slick Willie Sutton was asked by a reporter why he kept robbing banks, and he said, quote, because that's where the money is, end quote. Makes sense. Here's Pretty Boy Floyd, by the way. But yeah, bank robbing, you know, had early roots. It started in kind of the Wild West days, but then it made it into modernity with people like this and John Dillinger seen here. And for all of that time frame, from like the Jesse Jameses of the world to the John Dillingers, a uh, bank robbing was, well, I don't want to say it was easy, but people kept doing it because you could get away with it, right? And cops didn't have helicopters and radios and, you know, banks didn't have cameras and all that kind of thing. And this is Johnny Depp portraying Dillinger, by the way. And so these crimes were continued into the era of the snub nose revolver, because remember, they didn't become common until Colt invented the detective special in the late 20s. And for reasons that I'm unaware of from my research, but regardless, they clearly decided, hey, let's market for that scenario, even though I'm like, how many bankers were there actually out there? Here's a bank robbery from a Batman movie. And uh, why would you, you know, market that specifically? It seems to kind of cut off a potential audience in a way, right? And actually, in reality, unsurprisingly, it's not like bankers were the majority uh, customers, owners of these weapons. Bank robbery is a very popular subject in film, so I just thought I would show a survey of that. While I talk about how, although that was the sales pitch and the theoretical scenario this weapon was for, it was actually owned by law enforcement. And maybe a bit surprisingly, uh, mail service employees. The Railway Mail Service, as it was called, was a subunit of the United States Post Office. And since these employees were kind of isolated, right, out on trains and carrying valuables, including often cash, they were good robbery targets, so they needed to be armed, and the banker's special was adopted as the official weapon for this profession. It's kind of interesting how the history of train robberies matches the history of bank robberies, right? You had from kind of this old-timey Wild West to a little bit more modern, you know, early 20th century version. So, two relics of the past, right? The train robberies and the bank robberies. 
their timelines overlap almost precisely kind of mid 19th century to early 20th century in terms of them being a big thing. I've talked before about the website oldcult.com and pretty awesome resource and here it's showing an assortment of vintage bankers specials. And going back to the railway service, they seem to be the reason there's so few of these things left. Uh, about 35,000 were manufactured overall, from what I understand. But the thing is, once they were discontinued, the railway service ordered their destruction. Not because of any malfunction or danger, like with the Colt Air Crewman, which I covered in my last video, uh, but just because, they said, no, once they get to the end of their uh, service life, ditch them. So here's some old advertisements, as you can tell, including for the 22 caliber. I love how crisp uh, this advert is. I don't know if you noticed at the top there as I was scrolling down, but it claims that this is a 22 that hits like a 38. Uh, I think that might be a little bit of false advertising from back in the day. It actually said, with a wallop, like a 38. It'd be pretty neat to see one of these in person, but uh, as you know, I was held a 38, which was neat enough. And here's what one of those looks like. Not the one I got to see, but with the actual literature as well. Pretty cool. You can see how the box and uh, several of the pamphlets have the name Bankers Special on there. In all, kind of a strange piece of handgun and cult history. You know, the overly specific job title baked into the weapon's name. Which, of course, was not entirely new. You know, before this, there was the Detective Special, as in Police Detective. There was the Police Positive, so at least, again, I was talking about the police. Uh, but, yeah, Banker, just such an odd way to go. And like I said, interestingly enough, it touches back on an older weapon naming slash marketing strategy specifically around people like bank tellers from a time before handguns were common. They existed, but before they were common. Uh, and this is the only video or article or whatever you will ever see or read that makes that connection. A little side benefit there of my uh, main expertise as a researcher. Uh, anyway, back to this example, you've been seeing more pictures of the one I actually got to hold, obviously, and it's a well-worn specimen, right? This thing did not just sit in a desk drawer for 30 years. I'm not saying it got used in a gunfight, of course, so we have no way of knowing that. Uh, here's a crazy little side note, too. Once this thing got kind of retired within the U.S., a bunch of them got adopted uh, in Hong Kong and Uruguay by police forces. And considering the quality of these, the way they were made back in the day, uh, I have no doubt that they saw long, long lives of service in those countries. Uh, I think I've mentioned this before, but my two 1963 Colt Cobras uh, fire perfectly. And that is about it. A look at a up-close look at a rare, oddly named and interesting firearm from the early 20th century, the Colt Bankers Special, seen here in 38 caliber, also made in a 22 and 32. Configuration. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.